I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm the Reverend Chris Mockmer. I'll be your host for the program today. We have good music and singing for you. Also, a sermon that I preached that I pray will increase your faith and get you ready to receive for whatever your need is in your life today. Also, we have the healing line. You'll watch people receiving prayer, receiving from the Lord, and you'll hear testimonies of how God is helping and blessing people. First, it's Angels Grace Cathedral Choir. They have a wonderful song, Brighten the Corner. Do not wait until some feet of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light upon.
The title of tonight's sermon is, Our God is Not a Man. Now this is a statement of obvious fact to most of you. And yet, why do people treat God as such? Why do they act this way, as if God was a man? Some act as if God keeps his promises like most people keep promises. That his word is weak and unreliable. But the Lord tells us in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? If a person will embrace this one scripture in their innermost being, believe it, and act upon it each and every day of their life, they should never again struggle with doubt and fear. Yet many, in spite of what God has said, regardless of his spotless record in their life, they react to troubles and trials as if God is nothing more than a man. God is not a man. Can a man mold and make another man out of the dust of the earth and breathe life into him? Can a man give that molded clay an eternal soul? Can a man speak a sun or a moon into existence? And what about the billions of stars in the galaxy? I ask these questions tonight to stir up your pure minds. I ask these questions to stir up your faith in God. Can a man hang the earth upon nothing? Can a man have the imagination and ability to create every single snowflake that falls from heaven and yet no two snowflakes be identical? Could a man create the millions and millions of living creatures that walk the earth, fly in the air, and swim in the sea? I ask you, what can a man do that God has done? There are people that don't believe God can or will heal a person's body. Yet God is the one who made the body. No one knows better how that body is to operate than the Creator Himself. Now, if a product you purchase malfunctions, is it not wise to take it back to the manufacturer that they may replace or repair it? God made the human body. He made it holy and in perfection. However, Sin has contaminated the human race since the Garden of Eden. A curse was placed upon the body since Adam and Eve disobeyed God, causing the body to be weak and afflicted, to be deformed and malfunction at times. Because of sin, the soul, mind, and body are contaminated with death. God's product, became defective. Under such a curse, the human race has been helpless to remedy this trouble. And this is why God sent Jesus, his only begotten son, into the world. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, speaking of Jesus, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus is the remedy for the sin curse. He is the cure for all sin and sickness. He came to heal soul, mind, and body. James chapter 5, verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins they shall be forgiven him. Through the divine blood of Jesus spilled at the whipping post, you can come boldly before the throne of grace, before the maker of 
the human body, and he can create or recreate what sin destroyed. Whatever the need is, our God has the supply. Jesus showed us the will of the Father when he walked this earth. He spent the vast majority of his time ministering to those who were sick and afflicted. Many times Jesus would ask a person, wilt thou be made whole? Meaning, will you let me fix every single problem in this defective product? Not just one or two things. Wilt thou be made whole? Jesus said at one point in the Gospels, healing is the children's bread. Jesus paid the price for your deliverance. He paid the price to spread you a table for the whole you. And he invites you on a daily basis to come and dine. Just as bread is common at the dinner table, so too is bread common on the Lord's table and the banquet that he spreads for his children. God is not a man. So why act like he is a man? By their lack of faith, they act as if God's word is unreliable. Now, some people, their word means nothing. They promise to do something, they may do it, they may not do it. But God's word is as strong as God himself. God said in the book of Ezekiel, For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. People can get confused thinking God does not keep all of his promises when he does not answer their prayer. God keeps his promises every single time when the conditions of that promise are met. There are many promises God has made in his word. Promises for soul, mind, and body. Promises for spiritual, physical, and financial blessings. Promises to meet every need that you could possibly face in this life. But there are conditions to meet for God to fulfill these promises. People miss it when they claim the promises of God without meeting the conditions, and the promises then go unfulfilled in their lives. Listen to what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Before coming to God for help, Take time to know what God has said about your issue. Know his promises. Know the conditions that are to be met in order for those promises to be fulfilled. And then put complete trust in those promises and obey all of the conditions that God has laid out for those promises. If you want to receive from the Lord and not be ashamed, then take time to study what God has said that you can have from him. If a, if a person makes the effort to meet the conditions of God's promises, then God is obligated to fulfill the promises. For he says, and for it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, God is rewarder, of them that diligently seek him. Now, there are certain things that will hinder God and tie his hands so that he is unable to move for people. That which might be fear, doubt, and unbelief. Think about it. People hindering God. You know, when I spoke to you earlier about all the mighty works that God had done, Remember, these works were done before man was created. Before man was created, God had complete liberty to do anything and everything he desired. He would speak and it was done. The most incredible manifestations. But when man came on the scene, God gave him the power of free choice. 
And this power has limited God again and again and again for the past 6,000 years. People have the power to choose whether to believe God or not believe him, whether to trust God or doubt God, whether to yield to his love or be bound in fear. It's up to the person to decide. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, take note here. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. If you want God to move for you, don't look at him like a man. Know that he is Lord God Almighty, and respect him as such. Know that he loves you with an unending love, and he proved this love at Calvary. And let that Calvary love purge you of all fear, doubt, and unbelief in your life. Then that Calvary love will begin to churn and operate the measure of divine faith that is within you. Because it tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, faith worketh by love. Faith operates by love. Our God is not a man. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The Lord invites his children to unload all of their cares, their troubles, and their trials upon him. But some prefer to unload them on people. You know, one great measuring stick of who you trust the most, when you have great troubles and burdens, who's the first one you go to? Who's the first one you run to? Many times that determines your closest relationship. Unfortunately for people, most of the time, they run to other people. Running to family, friends, even a psychiatrist with all their burdens and cares. Running here and there to people, never thinking to go to God. But what can a man do that God cannot? People can't take your burdens. Besides, most people you go to, they have burdens of their own they're trying to handle. And if people do listen to you, chances are they're only doing so to be polite. They may feel sorry for you, but where's help in that? Where do you find a remedy in people feeling sorry for you? Now, a psychiatrist, they'll gladly listen to you for the right price. But what good will that do? All you do, they sit in a chair, you lay on a couch, and you vomit up all your troubles of the past, and you sit there and look at it and analyze it. And you may get temporary relief, but there's no remedy in that. You just get enough relief in your feelings to keep going back over and over and over, doing the same thing, and they keep charging you money for it. The Bible says, forget the past and press towards the goodness of God that he has in store for you today and on tomorrow. The Lord will gladly take your burdens any time of the day or night, then give you a song, peace, joy, and happiness, and he'll do it free of charge. But don't do what some people do. They trust the Lord just enough to take the burden to him, but they don't trust him enough to leave the burden there. God is not a man. Therefore, you have every right to put 100% confidence and trust in him. He has never let you down, nor will he ever start. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, 
and lean not unto thine own understanding, your own weak, foolish understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Trust God to work things out for you. Trust God that he cares for you, that he knows what's best for you. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. You want to know what divine faith is? Trust and obey. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Get rid of your own understanding and then acknowledge him in all of your ways. In other words, obey him in everything. And he will direct your paths. Jesus came to earth to introduce you to the Heavenly Father. In the Sermon on the Mount, it's a great introduction. Jesus gives great insight to the Father's care for his children in this sermon. Jesus tells us not to be troubled with the daily cares of life. In other words, what we will eat or drink, the clothes we will wear. He reminds us of the birds that his Father made. How they do not sow or reap, but daily God provides for them. And then he points us to the lilies of the field. How gloriously the Lord God Almighty dressed them. And how beautifully they are clothed. And then he asks the question, are not God's children much more important? Jesus went on. If any man, being a sinner, knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask of him? Yet no matter what the Bible says, some people believe it is the will of God for them or their loved one to be sick and afflicted, to keep them humble before the Lord, they declare. People that make such claims they are not a good representation of God. They do not know God, his ways, or his promises. Their belief contradicts the word of God. James chapter 1, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In all my years in the ministry, I have never seen a perfect gift of cancer or a perfect gift of heart trouble. I have never seen a perfect deformity in a child. Never. All trouble of the body comes from Satan. The human race lost perfect health and eternal life when Adam sinned in the garden. But God sent Jesus to earth to seek and to save all that was lost when Adam and Eve sinned and sold out to Satan. And that includes good health and a body made whole. In the 10th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus spoke of the Heavenly Father's attention and loving protection towards those that love and trust him. Your heavenly Father knows you so well that even the, all the hairs upon your head are numbered. He notices every time a little sparrow falls to the ground, so fear not because you are more valuable, more precious than all the sparrows in the world. God is not a man, but do you act like he is? Do you treat him as such? He is the great God of the universe. He holds all of your tomorrows in his hands, and he has your best interest at heart. This is why Jesus proclaimed, don't worry about tomorrow. Rather, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Our God has all power, all wisdom, all knowledge, so never pray to him wanting your own way. That's just declaring to God that you think you know better than him. The Bible says the way of the Lord is perfect. You should never be disappointed in his will for your life or his answers to your prayers. 
And don't become impatient and fearful if he doesn't move or answer your prayers right away or when you think he should. God is not a man. He knows exactly, exactly when to move. Wait upon him in patience, trusting his promises. Psalm 34, verses 17 and 19. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Not one trouble, not a few troubles, not most of them, all of their troubles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Remember when you were a sinner, God in great love and patience worked to draw you into his kingdom. And for some of you, he had to work many, many years to get you to that place. So, you should afford God the same opportunity. Afford him the same love and patience. Upon making your requests known unto the Lord, praise him immediately. Immediately start praising him, even before the answer comes. Praise him, and then patiently wait upon the manifestation of deliverance. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Also, in waiting upon the Lord, do not regard false symptoms above God's promises. Here is where the devil gets sneaky and he robs. Now, Jesus said the devil is a thief and a robber. And what God gives people, the devil can rob if you're not careful. It tells us in Jonah, chapter 2, verse 8, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Lying vanities. Lying vanities, as the Bible speaks of, are false symptoms and troubling thoughts that are contrary to the promises of God. And the promises of God they are God's mercies towards humanity. So, according to this scripture in Jonah, if you regard false symptoms, troubling thoughts above the promises of God, you forsake your mercy from God in these promises. Our God is truly faithful, and you should seek to faithfully please him by presenting yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him each and every day. However, the only way you will be able to do this is living by divine faith. The Bible tells us the just shall live by faith. And without faith, you cannot please God. Because there will come a time in your walk with the Lord when you will neither understand nor want to do the will of God within yourself. In such situations, you cannot lean to your own understanding or go by your feelings if you are going to please God and obey him. Our God is not a man. Keep this before you the next time you face a great trial a deep valley, or the devil tries to lay an affliction upon you. Our God is not a man. He is no respecter of persons. He loves all people. It's just God hates the sin in people. It doesn't matter your race, your skin color, if you're rich or poor, educated or uneducated. For God, unlike man, looks on the heart of a person, not on the outward appearance. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the B part. 
For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God measures a person by what is in their heart. So when it seems that some people are receiving from God more than others, it is because these people who are receiving more have learned how not to tie God's hands and limit him in their life. Not tying his hands. But yet so many people tie his hands with sin and disobedience. They tie his hands with their tongue of complaining, gossiping, giving opinions, grumbling. They tie his hands with doubts, fears, and unbelief. They tie his hands by acknowledging lying vanities instead of embracing the all-powerful Word of God. Friend, listening to this sermon, you may have lived an awful life of sin, and it seems that there's no way out for you. You may feel God can never forgive you for what you've done, that all is lost. But I want you to take heed to this sermon tonight and remember, God is not a man. There is power in the blood of his son Jesus that was shed on the cross to deliver you from all sins and shame, to give you a new life and make you a new person on the inside. Jesus called this the born-again experience, born new on the inside. I want to say the sinner's prayer with you right now. Most of you don't need to say it, but there may be one or a few who do. And you who are watching, you who are listening by way of radio, if there is any sin in your life, any disobedience, anything you know you're doing or saying that displeases God, well, the Bible says, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So make your confession right now. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Lord, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And friend, if you meant that prayer, the power of divine blood has delivered you, set you free, and made you new on the inside. This is why Jesus came to earth, suffered and died on a cross, and spilled his divine blood, that that power may work for you. And with his stripes, we are healed. So if you're watching and you're sick in body, you're in pain, or you're listening, I want you who are watching to put your hand against mine on the screen. This is a form of laying on of hands. You who are listening, put your hand on your listening device. Jesus said a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And I'm the Lord's believer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick in body, those who are in great pain. God, lay a healing hand upon each one. Honor those blood stripes placed upon your son's back. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let that virtue flow to each one and make them well, completely whole for your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement. Give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. We love to hear about what God did for you. Send us your testimony. You can do so by email. Send it to testimonies at ernestangely.org, and we will rejoice in the Lord with you. And now, you who don't have the Holy Ghost, you must have this power from on high. Keeping power, overcoming power, 
power to change you in the moment in the twinkling of an eye when the Lord returns. You who are listening, get off to yourself right now. And I'll call the anointing down upon you. And when that anointing comes upon you, praise the Lord. Praise him with that word glory. Keep praising him with your whole heart. And as you praise him and the Holy Ghost moves in, the power of the Holy Ghost will come into you. And when he arrives, he will change those glories. And he will take over. And he will use your tongue. And he will speak in another language. It is the miracle of the Holy Ghost to take your tongue and use it to honor and glorify the Lord in another language. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you. God, move. God, they need the Holy Ghost. You promised it. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And friend, praise the Lord and don't stop till the Holy Ghost comes in. God bless you tonight. Friend, I hope you were blessed by the sermon today, and I pray that you receive from the Lord all that you needed in your life. Partners, I want to encourage you, read the letter Reverend Angley sent to you this month. The theme of this letter is wonderful. Divinity is ours to use, and through Jesus Christ, we have that heritage. We can use divinity in this life to be overcomers in the Lord. We can be just like Jesus. Read the letter. It will bless you and inspire you in a great way. And friend, I just want to take this opportunity on behalf of all of us at Grace Cathedral. Thank you for standing by this Jesus ministry with your ties, your love offerings. All that you're giving is helping us to win souls around the world. Now, through technology, we are connecting with people everywhere throughout the world, even pastors, evangelists, prison chaplains, and we are able to help them help their people, help their congregations. It is wonderful indeed. What a blessing you are through this Jesus ministry. Now you can donate through our website at ernestangely.org. Or if you would like, you can always mail in your support. Write to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio 44309. And those of you watching in Canada, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, m 8 z 5P9. Keep standing by, friend, and watch as the Lord opens up the windows of heaven upon your life and pours you out great and mighty blessings, spiritual, physical, and financial. And remember, each month that you sponsor, you get new giant little books of the month. And for the month of February, you get two books. The first is I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And you will also get the giant little book, The Greatness of the Fire of the Holy Spirit. So send in that support this month and you'll get two giant little books for your reading pleasure. Now we have more music and singing coming up for you. First, it's the singing gospels. Just ask Jesus. <laughs> Are you living free from sin? God's drawing you from afar, making all to where you are. Just ask Jesus in your heart, He will give a brand new start. Have you really been, really been, really been born again? Jesus tells us in His Word to let His voice be heard. For us to be his light shining brightly through the night Jesus died in our place, covered us with saving grace On the third day he arose, heaven's power ever flows Have you really been born again? Are you living free from sin? God's drawing you from afar, making all to where you are Just ask Jesus in your heart, he will give a brand new start have you really been, really been, really been born again? The 
message in this song We'll keep you from all wrong As we walk the narrow way In God's presence we will stay Read the Bible, pray it fast Gives you power that will last Living life to the most With God the Son and Holy Ghost Have you really been born again? Are you living free from sin? God's drawing you from afar Making all to where you are Just as Jesus in your heart He will give a brand new start Have you really been, really been, really been born again? Have you really been born again? Are you living free from sin? God's drawn you from afar, making all to where you are. Just as Jesus in your heart, He will give a brand new start. Have you really been, really been, really been born again? Just as Jesus. Just as to go to heaven. That's a great number by the Cathedral Boys. Now taking you back into Grace Cathedral, and it's time for the Healing Line. You'll also hear some testimonies of how God has moved and blessed others. And as you watch and listen, friend, you can receive from the Lord yourself. I sanctify the Lord God. I declare, O oh Lord, every miracle, every healing, every deliverance is for your honor and glory. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. We are just witnesses to your work, what you do for people through the power of divine blood. In the name of Jesus. And where are you from? From Copley. I have two testimonies. Good. Okay. Last month, I was so sick and just nauseated and uh, the pain. I wouldn't care if I had just went home. I was just mm -hmm. that sick. And so anyway, they got a hold of uh, Reverend Millar, and Reverend Millar uh, talked to me on the phone, 
and he prayed, okay, because I, you know, I didn't have to, uh, any appetite or anything. And after he got through praying, it dawns on me, I'm hungry. What? Because, you know, I'll eat anything that don't eat me, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> I went to the kitchen, and I was eating everything. Do you hear me? Everything. And I slept like a baby. And the next day I got up, I was like, thank you, Lord. That's all I need. Yeah. And so. Give the Lord a prayer. Yes, I yeah. thank the Lord for that. And last uh, week, as you know, I was uh, so weak and uh, uh, no strength hardly. Because you remember I told you, Reverend, I just want to go lay down somewhere. I was just so tired and, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I was trying to get here, every piece that I put on, I had to sit down, you know, rest. Put another piece on, I had to rest. You know, and I was praying all the way that no one would be driving crazy because I wouldn't have the strength to jerk my car out of the way, you know. And so anyway, I came to you and you prayed. And uh, so you, you prayed for me and I didn't uh, think too much of it. I went back out and sat, you know, uh, at the uh, choir mother's uh, seat. And as I was sitting, it was time for me to run the notes you know, for the choir and stuff, you know. And so when I run the note, I was going up the ramp and I was like, oh, I got my miracle. I got my strength and I'm weak, uh, you know, I'm strong and stuff. And when I got outside the door, I did a little jig. <laughs> I said, oh, yes, I got it. And so anyway, usually I, I'll come down the ramp, you know, but anyway, I went down the steps and I was holding on, but I was kicking high, you know. <laughs> I wanted to see, you know, sure. I got it. And so anyway, I, I sit there and as I was going down the steps, I told the girls, I said, girls, I got it, I got it. I said, I got my strength back and everything. And I said, and I think you were going to the office and I said, Reverend Mockmer, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I've been fine ever since. And you know, cause I'm 80 years old and I have to do everything myself. I don't have anybody to bring me a glass of water. We sure don't look 80. <laughs> God's been good to you. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. And uh, I thank God for you ministers and Reverend Angeli because you know, if I hadn't have been in this ministry, you know, I'd have been dead because, you know, in 85, I had the cancer, you know, the breast and stuff, and they wanted to operate, and I was like, oh, well, no, not for me. You know, for others, it's fine. But for me, no, because like I, I told him, huh, the God that I serve, he said, I can do all things. Is there anything too hard for me? I am God. That's right. You know, and so anyway, that stuff, uh, you know, we've had so many miracles and healings through my family and stuff. And I'll say one uh, quick one for my t uh, sister. She had uh, open heart surgery uh, got a couple months ago. And they had, uh, she had very bad valves, you know. And so the surgeon said, uh, it would probably, I said, well, how long is that gonna take? He said, four to five hours. Four to five hours? I said, I'll tell you two, okay? <laughs> And so, anyway, do you know, little over two hours, she was out and they was taking things out and she was 72 years old. Cause she's, she drives a 56 foot uh, semi when her husband's a truck driver, when he sleeps, well she wheels. And she's wheeling now and doing everything. Uh, you know. God is good. God is good all the time. Yes, he is. What do you need tonight? I don't need anything. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, I feel great. Like I tell you, I can run a marathon, okay? You know, I can, I can do anything and lift anything, and I thank God for my good strength and you ministers. Without you, where would I be? Well, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. I need a miracle yes, all over. Right. Lord, in the name of Jesus, the all over miracle, heal her tonight. I call healing to her body. Lord, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, take that. Let it work. Yes. Make you whole. Thank you. God bless you. you. Yeah, we agree. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. As you know, I've been really sick for a number of days. And through your prayers, I've made a lot of improvement. But now I need a miracle of strength. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, clear it out and give her strength. In the name of Jesus, I call strength blood strength to her body. 
In the blood name of Jesus, Lord, make her well. Make her whole. In the name of Jesus. In the blood name of Jesus. And take that. Get well. God bless. I have some allergies and a throat condition. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Loose him from it. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Been back to the Lord about 20 weeks, delivered cigarettes and alcohol. It's been a good journey. Yes, it has. Um, um, I had two things wrong. I, w I went to a doctor about a year, year and a half ago, and uh, I had a lot of back problems. And the X-ray showed like I got a lot of deteriorated disc, and uh, I can't take pain, pain medication and be at work. Uh, so I went to a chiropractor, and it was the worst thing I ever did in my life. It was miserable. It was horrible. And uh, uh, they said the only thing I could do is just suffer the pain until you know surgery. And, you know when that day comes and. Uh, the other thing is uh, losing my eyesight, and it's, you know, I went and got checked, but it's something else, because it's, it's worse and worse, and I can't read the phone. Well, you're a child of God. God's not a man. He made you. Lord, I call healing to his eyes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he faithfully serves you. Lord, make the correction. I call life to his eyes. And Lord, his back. In the name of Jesus, loose him. Lord, I call healing to his body. Lord, move. Lord, move. In the name of Jesus. In the blood name of Jesus. In the blood name of Jesus. Try it out. God's not a man. He made you, brother. He made you. Feels a lot better. Feels a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I had a hard time sitting in service. Yeah, keep working. Keep working. Gently work it. See what he's done. You're his child. He wants you whole, brother. Oh, yeah, it's hard to be in a work. Yeah. It's been pain like that. Yeah. God oh, bless you. I appreciate you. it. God bless Thank you. you. Hi. <laughs> um, I've been having, I don't know, like cramps, but they're worse than cramps. And like if I go to stretch to get it out on both sides, it just won't go. It stays there for the longest time. And then I've been having a cough like for months, like just a, just like a, a little bit, not all day long or nothing. Mm -hmm. And then my lungs also kind of bother me. And I <clears throat> just want to say a testimony that I had gotten prayer for a tendon from um, Reverend Millar, because uh, it was really hurting. Well, that it, it was gone after that. I haven't had a problem, but I've been getting a lot of, like pr prickliness or like numb or whatever. I don't know. Like feels like needles. Well, Jesus would ask, "Will thou be made whole?" I will. <laughs> I will. In the name of Jesus, I bind, I curse every condition in her body. Loose her from it all. In the name of Jesus, I call good health to her. In the blood name of Jesus, Lord, make her well. Make her whole all over. Friend, I hope you were blessed by the healing line. And I want to encourage you at this time, if you're in need of a miracle or healing, maybe you have a friend or a loved one who is, I'd like to invite you to be in our services. Every weekend, we have four services in two locations. We have the Friday night service starting at 7 p.m. in our Cuyahoga Falls location. You'll enjoy good music and singing, a sermon, the word of God going forth, and then it will be time for the healing line where you can receive prayer for whatever that need is in your life. Saturday, we have a youth service at 7 p.m. in our Akron location. This service we dedicate to the youth. Our young people preach, testify, sing, and make music for the Lord. People of all ages do attend, and they're greatly blessed. Then Sunday, we have two services. First, it's a 10 a.m. service. It's a teaching session in the main auditorium. We also have Sunday school for the boys and girls in our junior church. Then 7 p.m. Sunday evening, it's a wonderful worship service. We worship the Lord with songs, testimonies, and the Word of God. So pay us a visit, friend. You'll be greatly blessed. And I want to encourage you to read the latest edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. The February edition is a wonderful one. Cherish God's presence. It's important 
because the presence of the Lord is the anointing, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke in a person's life. So read it for free online at ernestangely.org. And when you're on our website, I encourage you to enjoy more songs, listen to testimonies, see miracles and healings taking place. You can also read sermons, tracts, books, and more. It's all at ernestangely.org. And if you haven't yet, do like us on our Facebook, Ernest Angley Ministries. We encourage you to visit. We have much in store for you. And friend, if you enjoy this program, if you've received a blessing, a miracle, or healing through this Jesus ministry, we invite you to share your testimony with us. Send it by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Well, I hope you were blessed today, friend. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. Are you enjoying the anointed music, singing, and preaching on this program? I want to let you know it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Ernest Angley World Radio. Go to our website to listen or download one of our apps. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you have an internet connection, you can listen. Ernest Angley World Radio, a voice to the world. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.